Hi friends, subscribers and viewers. Thank you for joining me today. You know, talking to you regularly, interacting with you in the comment section and via email and DM sometimes feels as if I know some of you. And I'm sure that the reverse is true and that some of you feel like you know me. But in reality, most of us have never met, have never spent time together and thus do not know one another. But I have an idea for 2022, which will change this dynamic a little. But starting today, I want to tell you something about myself and how it relates to the royal family. I was diagnosed with ADS or Attention Deficiency Syndrome at age 37. I scored a whole 98% on the ADD ADS scale, which is rather high, I would admit. I also have some form of OCD, but like I said before, I'm not going to explain my psychological alphabet soup to you, but suffice it to say, depression, ADS and OCD has not always helped me to enjoy life. All of this has caused problems to say the least, frustration, anger, boredom, sadness and every other emotion available. It is also the reason why I hate maths. To this day, no one should dare ask me to count anything. By the time I get to five, I'm so bored that I start tapping my foot, something which is involuntary and which I do when I'm bored or nervous. However, I love languages. And although I grew up in the countryside and returned to the countryside in my early 40s, where I do not have the opportunity to speak or learn other languages, I do speak two fluently, another two somewhat, and can at least speak a few words in a multitude of languages. A while ago, I recalled a discussion I had with a psychiatrist many, many years ago, and I recalled something I wrote after our session, a whole dissertation on the most powerful words in any language and one of those is why or hukum, porke, warum, warum, kungani. <laughs> it does not matter what language we use. To ask why is a very loaded question. When we have small children it is funny when they keep asking why. Why is this lady's hair black? Because her mommy's hair was black. Why was her mommy's hair black? <laughs> we all know that. We are all familiar with these scenarios. But as we grow older and we start asking ourselves why. Why didn't I react sooner? Why did I say this or I didn't say it? Or why did I do this or why didn't I do this? Why didn't I go there or stay away from there? Why, 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 why? And as we grow older, these whys or better translated as guilt, increase until it cripples us. It crippled me until I had a serious bout of depression about four years ago. And when I went to a doctor to get a prescription for the medication I used before, he checked my records and found out not only that I have not used the meds for about six years, but also that I had been shall we say, reckless with it in the past, so he insisted that I attend a few therapy sessions. Well, to cut a long story short, the discussion about why came up again, and the most important thing this particular therapist taught me was to stop taking responsibility for other people's actions, to stop questioning things I can no longer change, and to forgive myself for things that I may have been to blame for, to take responsibility, to own it, and to forgive myself. And that is where the royal family comes into this discussion and video. They do not own up to anything they've done wrong, or any mistakes they have made, and therefore their mistakes will keep popping up. The public will keep forgiving them until eventually we stop forgiving them and there will be continuous 
dysfunction in the family as they cannot forgive themselves and move on. It is like putting a bad song on repeat or in a loop on your computer. At some point, it will drive you crazy. And the same thing is happening to the royal family. I know many of you are sick of me talking about Charles and want me to go back to talking about Harry and Meghan and crack jokes about them, etc. And I will, but for today's video, I need to start with Charles again. And again with a cash for honest scandal. It has now come out that Charles had written Dr. Mafus letters and thank you notes and even send him a gift or two. Ah, you say, but you listen to Lady C and it is quite normal and regular practice to send letters and thank you notes and small gifts to thank someone for large donations or to give them recognition by putting their logo on your website, etc, etc. And yes, it is. But Our Lady made one mistake. While it is normal to do that, it is illegal to give honours and in particular citizenship in return for money and or donations. This, my dear, in simple terms, can be called bribery. And here again is a prime example of the damage being done by not taking responsibility and forgiving yourself. No one believes that it was all Michael Fawcett's doing and that Charles knew absolutely nothing about it. And now, with the new revelations, someone will have to be living in Never Never Land to believe he had no knowledge of it. Now, had Charles admitted to it, owned up to it, apologized, we may have felt empathy for the man and forgiven him and moved on. And he would have had the opportunity and time to forgive himself. But instead, he had to play silly buggers and in doing so, practically challenges us to go digging. And unfortunately, what was found is not pretty and does not look good. And like the Epstein saga, now throws a lot of shade over the entire royal family and a good portion of the elite of the United Kingdom. Now, I've spoken to you about Dr. Bin Mafus not being the first or only person Charles had been accused of doing favours for in exchange for money or donations in a previous video. So, just to recap, in September, Douglas Connell stepped down as chairman of Charles's foundation after reports in the Sunday Times of about $692,000 which was offered to the foundation by Russian banker Dmitry Lewis. A portion of the money apparently has since been returned but officially not because it was yet another cash for favor scandal. Oh no no. It was returned and the official reason given was that after Dmitry Lewis donated a portion of the promised amount, namely $138,000 to the foundation, they did a background check on Mr. Lewis and found that he had an overturned conviction for fraud. <laughs> yeah, right. We all believe that that was the reason. Why would you return a donation or mistrust somebody when he had an overturned conviction. No, -uh. no, no, no. Yeah, right. So now we are all to believe that that was the reason, except that a letter was since presented in which Charles thanked Dimitri Lewis and suggested he and Lewis could meet up after the pandemic. Okay, guys, so there you have that. But that is not all. There was also the scandal involving Mr. Wynne Parker selling a tour, dinner, entertainment, overnight stay and swift meet up with Charles at Dumfries House for a mere £100,000. Yet there are those naive people who still believe Charles is innocent. Well, for those of you, I looked into the whole sordid mess even deeper 
and what a rabbit hole it is. Remember Harry and Meghan staying in a Russian oligarch's home in Vancouver Island? Remember Harry being pranked by two Russian hackers? And may I remind you that the previous owner of the Montecito home is Russian Sergei Grishin. And now I'm going to ask you whether you know who this guy is. Do you remember where you last saw him? Yes, on a photograph with BBC's media editor Amol Rajan and Misha Nunu at one of Weinstein's parties, allegedly. This man is Eugenie Alexandrovich Lebanov, a Russian British baron, the son of a KGB spy. Yes, Lebedev is currently the owner of the Independent and the Evening Standard in Britain, while his father owns the Independent Novaya Gazeta newspaper in Russia. Now you guys go figure that out for yourselves. Yes, my friends, Queen Elizabeth II granted Eugenie Lebedev a lifetime peerage after his longtime friend Prime Minister Boris Johnson nominated him in July 2020. After permission was granted by Russia to include the names of Russian districts in his title, he became Baron Lebedev of Hampton in the London Borough of Richmond upon Thames and of Siberia in the Russian Federation. Lebedev is thus the first and only Russian-born member of the House of Lords, whose 800 members are a mix of aristocrats, bishops, politicians, etc. And Lebedev's life peerage gives him direct influence over Britain's politics and laws until the day he dies. But while Eugenie, or Eugene as he's known in Britain, is climbing the social ladder, there are some concerns in the security services. It was, after all, his father, an ex-KGB operative, who bought the newspapers and installed his son to run them. And although Eugene today has dual citizenship and has studied in Britain and counts Alton John as one of his best friends, his father still owns a paper in Russia still lives in a huge compound in Russia, yet regardless of these concerns, Boris nominated him, the Queen approved, and today the son of a KGB operative hobnobs with British royalty and elite. And yes, Eugene Lebedev is now even a godparent to Alton John's son, Zachary. But of course, those of you who are history boffins, will at this point remind me that the royal family is closely related to the Romanovs and therefore the current British royal family may indeed have a special place in their hearts for the Russians. After all, Prince Philip was related to the Romanovs through both his mother and father. As a matter of fact, when the remains of two children thought to be Mariah and Alexei Romanov, were found in a field. It was Prince Philip's DNA that was used to identify them. The Queen's first cousin, Prince Michael of Kent, is also the grandson of Grand Duchess Elena Vladimirovna of Russia, who was the first cousin of Tsar Nicholas II. So maybe that answers the current whys why the members of the royal family are today so partial to everything and everybody Russian. But is family history enough to explain selling access to Putin like Prince Michael of Kent did or tried to do? Living, renting and buying homes from them. Selling honours and citizenship to Russians. I don't know, but all I do know is that too much of anything or too much of something can not be coincidence. And yes, when next I have the time and energy to edit a long video, I'll take you down the rabbit hole of the Saudi connection and in a third video show you something really shocking which I'm still 
mulling over and looking into as my OCD will not allow me to talk about it until I had accepted, digested it in my own mind. Okay guys, this had been a mouthful and I'm sorry I took you on such a long journey in order to get to the point, but I needed to take you on this journey through my thought process and you will recognize the reason for it in a further video with the same theme. Okay, so it is 12 days until Christmas and this year I do not have many preparations to make as I'm not home, but I hope all of you are having a good time going through yours and whether you celebrate Christmas or not, I hope you will have a great time with your own family. Okay guys, until I see you on the next video, as always, take good care of yourselves. Bye.